My friends, I have a problem. I love florals. Did you know that? I paint them a lot and I'm trying to limit myself because I don't want people to be like, why do you always paint florals? But at the same time, I love them so much. And this is what we're painting today. I will not apologize for it. So get your paints out. We're doing a loose floral composition today with all kinds of fillers, all kinds of cutie patootie florals. Let's get to it. So my friends, today we're using a Saunders Waterford watercolor paper, 100% cotton. And I have my Christy Rice number 12 round brush here. I love it. I also have my Princeton Heritage number two, and that was a number eight before. I'm generously spraying down my paint palette here. This is the Winsor Newton professional watercolor paint that I've been using. And everything is linked in the description of this video if you want to check out my supplies. So we are starting with our beautiful loose bouquet of flowers and we're gonna do a peony first. So I'm just taking my number two round and what I like to do is just add in this beautiful center, just slightly curving these little lines around so that um, they kind of form this little ball as well. Now you can add your centers in at the end if you want. I just find that I don't reserve enough white space of the paper typically for what I want. And so I like to add in the uh, centers later on. Now, if you're doing a really dark center, it doesn't really matter. You can totally add in that dark over your other color and you'll probably be fine. But because this is light, uh, sometimes that's a challenge. So I sometimes start with the center and I sometimes end with it. So I've got a variety of pinks on my palette here. I've got some orange and some red, and I'm just going to make a few little wells here of this paint that I can refer to. Now for the first part, the first brush strokes, I'm doing them pretty, pretty dark. So these C curve shapes here that are encircling that center. And I'm thinking right now about how I want to start lightening. So I'm just going to, I dip into my paint and I kind of squeegee off the side, a little bit of color. Um, what I'm doing right now is dipping into well, not dipping, but using my Christy Rice number 12 round brush here. And so I just have a little bit of paint on my brush, but I'm basically just using what I have put on the paper and spreading it out. What I'm wanting to do is create a really loose look where we have a variation of values and I'm even removing some paint over here. Now value refers to the lightness and the darkness of a color. And so with watercolor, if you're not familiar, when you add water, that's what lightens it. We don't use white paint to lighten, we use water. And if you have more saturated paint, you're gonna have a more dark value of that color. So right now, some fluffy petals, just by adding water and doing these little light C-curve shapes, you can add some color back in too. The beauty of watercolor is that, you know, you can just start really light and then you build up your colors and and see where you need to go as you're adding things in. So I've got some of that orangey, peachy color on my flower as well now on my brush. And depending on how things turn out, we may do a second layer later of more color. But right now we can drop in some color just to create some shadows of where those petals are, where they're formed together using some clean water just to, just to kind of spread that color around and let's do, now we're gonna do two more buds. These are, well, they're not buds. They are florals, but they're side facing. So I started really dark and the same thing using the water or very watery paint to just make these C curve shapes. These are always following kind of, they were curving around the bud and now they're opening. So they still have that C curve shape. And then I'm using some really light paint just to make some fluffy marks around that flower um, on the top of the bud. So we're gonna do a little bit more right here. Sometimes we can get a little bit closer to that yellow as it starts to dry, fill in that space, and then we're not feeling like um, we have too much white space in between things. We wanna figure out that balance of white space to putting in color because it is a practice that we learn over time. Too much white space, it's gonna look a little cheesy. Too little white space and everything looks like one big blob. Now we're doing our third little floral here, just a nice little bud. I'm just kind of scrubbing lightly on the paper 
And then I'm just pressing down with the belly of the brush and making little petals that are encircling this little guy. Starting off with some nice peachy color too, getting lighter. Remember to dip your brush in your water and then just kind of slide it on the side. I say squeegee it off, but either way. Um, and that's gonna allow you to lighten up that color really easily. So if you need any more marks that you need to put down, go ahead and do that right now. And your brush is going to have some water on it, especially because the water is already tinted, at least for me. And so you can still have some really light color without having to dip into your palette and just make it really lovely and loose. So I'm gonna grab some of this grayish, brownish color. And the reason I'm using this with lots of water is I'm trying to emulate a type of white flower. And since we don't have white paint to do that, we have white paper, we can do a tan or a light blue. So I'm just going to add these really quick brush strokes around. Now it's pretty dark, but it's going to lighten up a lot. So filling in where some of that white space is, I'm just grabbing water on my brush and now spreading out some more color. So this would be the way that I might paint like a hydrangea or maybe even a geranium, just some type of floral that has tiny little flowers within this bunch. So we are trying to figure out this composition. And so what I wanna do for this one is I've got the one in the top left and then this one is on the bottom right. And we're gonna do a third, at least for now, with that watery paint right over here. So trying to balance it out so that your eye is moving across the paper, zigzagging, not getting bored, but that we have a good distribution of color and of form and of large and small as well. So you can see how even with that tannish or brownish paint, now it looks like we're getting some shadows. I'm gonna mix up some of my cobalt blue. It's really a light mix of that, lots of water in there. And we're gonna start doing probably the same type of marks. Let me see. Sometimes I'm figuring it out as I'm going, but I'm starting with some darker marks here, just across this little section here. Little, well, this could be hydrangea itself. And we'll add in some stems to some of these florals and some centers to some of the other ones. So we have one at that top right section, so now we're going here to the, to the middle of the left and adding that in, that beautiful blue paint. So now you saw that I started with kind of a, a lighter mix of blue, but then dipped into my water to get an even lighter mix and spread that around. Every time I am painting something, I'm trying to figure out what do I add in, what do I change? For example, right here, I realized I needed another bunch of those white flowers and sometimes all it takes is stepping away taking a look and then analyzing what i need to change so now i've got some sap green here that i've mixed up and i'm going to create some leaf stems and instead of adding the stem first what i prefer to do is just putting in the leaves and i'm dipping in lightening up my leaf here and then when i come back through I will go ahead and add my stems. Why do I do it that way? Well, here's the reason. For me, I feel like things end up looking more organic. You might be worried like, okay, well, do I know if I'm painting the leaf in the correct direction if I'm doing this uh, and I'm taking my number two round here? And I think within practice, everything gets easier, right? But I'm able to now angle this stem based on what makes sense to the leaves versus adding in leaves and what makes sense based on where I put the stick straight stem. And I don't know, I find that the it just gets organized a lot better in this way. So especially when I put in the little stems to connect it to the big stems, I don't know, things always end up looking a bit more flowy, fluid, and um, natural to me. So I've got this beautiful turquoise aqua, and I'm going to put in these beautiful leaves. It's just a variation of the colors already on there and adding in just some more of that filler in the spaces here. So we've got in this section here, we're gonna go up a little bit higher and then to the top as well. So when you're looking at your composition, you wanna make it very interesting. You want the eye to zigzag across the page to the top to the bottom and one way to do that is by making sure that you have a balance in the colors in your composition. Of course, 
having larger elements and smaller elements. The smaller elements here, for example, these leaves, as I'm adding in the stems, they are going to help to fill in those gaps when our florals, which are the stars of the show, um, they are present and they are doing their thing, but the filler is gonna help to complement and accentuate, especially if you're using some complementary colors, it's really going to make an interesting difference in your composition. So now it's time to add in some connecting, some anchors, some connecting forces. Basically, with these beautiful large balls of blooms, we're gonna add in some sticks, add in some stems. Sometimes I do a little V shape, and sometimes I just do a straight stick, and that's just connecting everything together. So you can see the little definitions of everything as well. I'm not sure what I would call these florals, but I absolutely love them. I like the color. They turned out better than I expected. Sometimes the mix I make is a little too gray, a little too dark, so I'm happy with how these turned out. As you're finishing up those little sticks there and adding those in, we're gonna start thinking about putting in a little bit of turquoise to our green. That might be too much. Let's mix it up and see how we like it. A little bit more green in there. So I wanted to put in another filler, some more leaves that look a little different. There's some spaces here that are, are gaps that I'd like to fill in. Make sure that we have a variation of the shapes and of the color. So you can use, this is a number eight round brush, and you can use a shape of the brush itself to create these marks. You really don't have to do a lot to make these come to life. So just making those quick marks here. And what I love to do is make sure that my greens have a variation. If you wanna be dipping into your water and taking off some of the paint for the same leaves, that's gonna make it look even more interesting. But today, for the most part, I'm choosing my variation and values with the different sections of fillers that I've added in. So this is one of my favorite parts, putting in little brush strokes here and there to fill in white spaces to emulate little leaves. Your eye is gonna see it and say, oh yeah, I know that those are leaves, even if you didn't painstakingly paint those in. All right, grabbing the cobalt, lots of water on there. I wanted to add in a fourth one of these blue blooms. So starting off, darker, more concentrated, right? And then adding in some water on the brush. Sometimes I dab it on the paper towel to take off liquid and sometimes I leave it. And then we're adding in some yellow centers for these flowers just to give it a fun little look, a little different than the white blooms that we have here. I'm always trying to figure out ways to add different types of texture, different values of color, different shades, and types of color as well as larger elements, smaller elements, all the things. So now we're really gonna fancy up our beautiful peonies here. I've got more of a concentrated color of that red or pink, you can use whatever you want. And we're just squiggling on some color. We're trying to emulate, you know, what are the sections of those petals that are in shadow? And this is going to help it look like our floral is more 3D, that there are shadowy parts in between petals or deep in the petals and creating that texture that brings it all to life. So I've got a nice bright pink for this top one here. I didn't do too much for adding in the texture and the shadows. And for this one here, a nice darker peach color. So we start really light, just to review. We have lots of water on our paint and then we add in more paint to those sections so that we have a medium or a darker value. All right, grabbing some yellow, and I just wanna make some little squiggly marks on these white florals. I thought it would be fun just to give them a fancy contrast as well. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed painting this with me today, and I would love to hear from you. Let me know in comments what's your favorite filler or are the florals your favorite? Do you like the leaves? Do you like uh, painting with a larger brush or a smaller brush for more details? This is a pretty loose composition that we did today and adding in a little bit of splatter because it wouldn't be a Tammy painting without it. I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did painting with you today. Alrighty, so we painted some loose florals. I don't know why I just did that, but I hope you had a fun time. I hope you took some time to relax, to think about perfectionism and how it's not gonna be an art because it has no place. 
I hope you found some relaxation and some rejuvenation today. And I'll see you guys soon in the next video.